quit, right? All right, we are live. Uh, hi, we're at Rad Junk, and uh, this is our weekly. I know we missed last week. That is my fault for traveling and doing race car things. Uh, our weekly live stream where we talk about news, uh, happenings in the store, like trade night last night, which was insane. Um, we're going to play some games. So joining me, as always, I say always like we've done this a lot, Absolutely. are good guy Dylan, um, weird guy Todd, and myself. Joining me, as always, um, I say always like we've done this a lot. Todd's doing an audio check, obviously, with his phone. He's good at this. And um, so, yeah. So what's going on, guys? How was your week? Whew, still recovering from last night. Yes, last night was crazy. Um, probably the biggest trade night I've seen here yet. Oh, for sure. I want to say we had well over 100 people throughout the night. Felt, felt like it, a lot of body heat. All uh, the tables were taken up. We had gosh, all the Reggies were there, plus some new people we haven't seen before. Yeah. A lot of big games. Big box earthbound was out. Um, of course, Josh brought some of his heavy hitters. Yeah, always. Every time. It's good. It never fails. Um, you guys pick anything up last night at trade night? Probably the best thing I picked up was a pair of 3D glasses for the Master System. Awesome. Yeah, I'm probably going to grab one of your 3D games later tonight and take it home to give it a shot because I thought I had a 3D game, but I don't. Are you going to do Zaxxon or Missile Defense 3D? Zaxxon. I might have to just flip a quarter. I think was Zaxxon the one that we tried here a while back? I think Missile Defense requires the light gun. I got that. Okay. I can try it. I think I'll, I'll try that one since it's got the light gun. That might be a little bit more interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll probably roll with that one. But, yeah, those, I've always wanted a pair of those. Always kept my eyes open on eBay. Just never really wanted to pony up the cash. So, pretty excited. I just got to trade for them. Cool. That, that's the same thing that happened to me. I always looked at them on eBay, but then I just never got them. And then I picked up a pair that came into the store. And then I, I mean, went to a Sega CD. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get Jack last night. You didn't get anything? I, I, no. uh, I don't think so. Usually I get something. Uh, the last game I picked up was Thunder Force 2 for me. Thunder Force 2? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of what I got. What, um, what didn't you get? Yeah, you got well, a picture. Okay. Well, well, <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you look at the Ride Jump page, uh, I meant to grab the pictures before we started so I could put them up on screen. We got a ton of new inventory in last night. I mean, a massive amount, and it's a wide range of inventory. Um, I mean, words can't describe how thankful we are for everybody that brings stuff and is willing to trade with us and sell us, you know, their extra games or trade for games that we have that they want. And uh, we have a really good community that comes out. Um, but I did pick up some games for myself last night for my personal collection. I try to always grab something to, like, add or trade out of my little box that I have. And uh, I think I got a Princess Tomato on NES. And I got. What did I get? What was the other game? I know we uh, we added some peripherals and the Atari. Eight. The Atari. Eight. Oh was corner. Yeah. yeah, the Williams Corner gained yeah. some uh, friends. So uh, another Atari eight hundred, Atari ten hundred and fifty disk drive, and I can't remember the cassette recorder. Uh, well. Yeah, the program recorder, which is the cassette drive, uh, all complete in box. Boxes are a little rough, but thank you, Derry. Um, that builds up our retro computer collection that me and the guys have which is cool um oh i got a gun knack last night that's what yeah, i got right. that's what i got solid thank you josh for that uh finally I have a physical copy of my favorite shooter um yeah we also raised a bunch of money for ecc in the arc which is good um we did some raffles and things like that congratulations to robert for winning the grand prize the rad junk retro pie thanks to the dave he put that together um, we also gave away a controller to Daniel Holcomb and a gift certificate to Josh Smith. Those were the winners of the raffle and uh, couldn't go to better people. So yeah, that was cool. Um, I know we played some games last night. We had some uh, we had some uh, Mario Kart Double Dash going. It was uh, sort of the adult version, but it was fun. <laughs> um, we had some Choo Choo Rocket. Uh, as always, people were on the arcade cabinets. I saw a lot of Soul Calibur going down. Absolutely. People were glued to the centipede machine, which is cool. And, um, feel free to come in and beat George and Sam's high scores whenever you 
want to on Centipede. <laughs> is, uh, good, good luck. <laughs> yeah, those two are uh, wizards in that game. It's kind of crazy. So yeah. I that's mean, that was right. That was um, trade night. Uh, things coming up. Things coming up. Um, sorry, guys. I'm slow. We were here till 2 a.m. last night. Got <laughs> home at 3. I woke up at like 6 to do some work for my day job, and uh, here we are. Yeah. Um, things coming up. ECC as always. I mean, we touched on the last podcast or stream, and uh, like I said, we also raised some money for it last night. It's our local convention that we are continuing to put on um, in the name of our retro and just gaming community in general. There's a lot of things that aren't just gaming. We've got cosplay. Uh, we've got a lot of artists. Um, panels on everything from getting started in YouTube to Twitch, how to hook up all your consoles, kind of like we do here, or um, any other streams that you see to get that going if you're into live streaming. Um, that's November 18th and 19th at the Ramada on Okaloosa Island. Tickets are on sale right now, so if you want, head over to the Facebook page or EmeraldCoastCon.com or EmeraldCon.com and you can purchase our tickets there through Eventbrite. We have VIP passes and weekend passes available at a discounted rate right now. Um, I want to say that the weekend passes are about $25 right now. So that's both days for 25 bucks, and with discounted hotel rates, that means you could stay the whole weekend and just hang out on site for pretty cheap. I think it would be under $200 for both nights with the rates, and you're right on the beach, which is yeah. cool. Um, there's going to be a lot of after parties and a pub crawl Friday night where we're showing off the um, new 8-Bit Heroes movie. Where oh, they, nice. uh, Joe Granado and his guys, they go and make an NES game, which is really freaking rad. Uh, they'll be out again showing off the NES Maker software, and uh, that's going to be really awesome. So Friday night, we're going to show the movie, then the pub crawl, then um, then the convention. And the convention's always a good time. So all the money for that convention actually goes to one of our local charities, the Ark of the Emerald Coast. They're a great charity. They help a lot of people, and they do a lot of good in the community. So... Um, if you want to help out the community and you know just celebrate gaming and being a nerd, yeah. then uh, absolutely come to Emerald Coast Con. And all of the vendors that are going to be there usually bring their hard hitting stuff. So if you're looking to add some solid stuff to your collection, it's definitely a place to go. Oh yeah, we've got game vendors. Uh, we will be there. Rad Junk will be there. Uh, we have hashtag Josh Clark Productions will be there, <laughs> uh, and we will have uh, I don't. What are we going to call Dave from now on? I mean, does he even need an introduction? I mean, yeah. the David Michael, Sir David Michael, <laughs> Sir will David be in Michael. attendance with his traveling nomadic caravan of games. <laughs> and uh, Florida sweetheart. He always brings some really cool stuff. Maybe you can even get him to trade off his complete in-box Neo Geo Pocket Color games <laughs> that he covets so dearly. Um, yeah, Dave will be here. We're going to have a retro gaming museum. Um, the retro console room. Retro console room as well. Uh, it's an opportunity to play all the favorite games you had from your chat past, and uh, you got everything from Atari 800. Hopefully, we're gonna get set up and have some Bill Williams games running. Absolutely. Uh, through NES, SNES, Genesis, Sega CD, 32X, Atari, Jaguar. Um, get an opportunity to play games that you don't actually get to see or don't have the ability to afford games like little samson um gosh what else metal warriors uh we may or may not have some very 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 rare nintendo games in attendance um oh, that yeah. may or may not have represented a some sort of competition <coughs> or challenge in the early 90s yeah uh, I think I think so, it was kind of a big deal. I think they made a movie that was about it. Yeah, something like that. I don't yeah. know. You know, some some garbage the Nintendo card. Huh. I mean, yeah. I'll let you guys uh, leave that to your imagination, but those will be there. And then it's something like Track and Field Game. Yeah. Uh, oh, so I'm like, yeah. I don't know. It's like a it's power like a, pad game. They hold, they hold, they hold some, kind uh, of, some kind of event in a stadium or something. I don't know. Wow. A, arena. It's like Pokemon Stadium? Uh, yeah. An event? Yeah. You an event, yeah. Runs well, you know how they have events for Pokemon, you know? But yeah, that's th right. this one's going to be in a stadium or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> also, we're going to have some tournaments, uh, namely some retro tournaments, which will be fun. Um, we're coming up with a 
set of pretty good challenges that we'll play, something similar to last year, where our own Todd Lawrence set yeah, the world record. record. Very true. For, uh... Who's the that game? I don't even Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. Yeah, uh, doing the home run derby. Uh, that was actually a, a big blast. And basically the way that can work is in order to participate in those activities, uh, donation to the Ark of the Emerald Coast, you participate, and that's it. You get your name on the leaderboard. Obviously there will be some small prizes, maybe gift cards, that sort of deal. Oh, yeah. Rad Junk will be giving away some gift cards. Uh, uh, we'll put some consoles up there you know, that you can win and take home, maybe some games. And if you'd like, uh, on the Facebook page, if you have any recommendations for tournaments for us to hold, like a retro game that you think would just be awesome and be a big crowd pleaser, please, please message us on Facebook. Um, like Blitz. Like Blitz. Like yeah. Blitz. We need plenty of people commentating about wanting Blitz. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. But which one? Uh, the League. No. no, no. <laughs> no. The only Blitz that matters is the N64 version. No. Uh, no. Dreamcast 2002. Ooh, 2003 on the GameCube. That was an awesome one. Did that have the license? Yeah. So I think that was the last year they had the license. It's the one with... Uh, Just give me the arcade machine. The, the, what's the dual one with uh, uh, NBA Showtime? Showtime. Oh, yeah. uh, that will actually be in attendance. Perfect. The giant showcase cabinet with the big screen. Uh, yes. Our good friend Derry is bringing that down. And if he can get it going, which he's very, very close. And uh, we may have two Blitz cabinets from what I'm hearing. So it's perfect. It'll, it'll be good. That should be a good one. Um, well, once again, if you have any recommendations, please put them on the Facebook page. Uh, we'd love to hear your input. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's ECC. That's going to be a lot of fun. November 18th and 19th. Get your tickets now. Um, let's see. And you want to bring up uh, Shack Food Day again? Oh, Shack Food Day. October 20... Is it 8th? 8th. 8th. Yes, October 20th. All right. Uh, October 28th is the 23rd anniversary of Shaq Fu, one of the most influential fighting games in existence. If you've not played this, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of a kind. And um, Genesis version has slightly is slightly more fleshed out, has more levels, more characters. Uh, SNES version is a little bit more playable. Um, however, we are celebrating the 23rd anniversary of Shaq Fu. Um, October 28th, so we will have a full day of Shaq Fu tournaments. There may or may not be a Shaq Fu arcade cabinet here, um, which is wow. going to be custom built. <laughs> and uh, we might raffle that off um, because I don't want it cursing my store. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Shaq Fu Day, that'll be, uh, that'll be fun. Uh, that's legitimately happening. Check out the event on our Facebook page. Um, if you guys have any recommendations for that that are Shack related or Shack Fu related. Shack trivia. And on down to pay less, pick up a pair of Shacks. Can we all go get Shacks? No, I'm gonna, I sure. think we should. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think they're but like $5. They're giving them away. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a Done. pulse, you can get a if pair of Shacks. If you come to Shack, <laughs> if they're $5, I won't make that promise, but we oh, may give away bucks. a couple of pairs of Shack shoes. That'd be a great like top prize. I, I like it. Sam, we got any comments yet? No, I Okay, cool. Uh, sorry, we got Sam over here. She's kind of... Our producer. She's our producer. She's uh, a worm in the corner because she's tired from last night as well. It was a crazy night. Um, so, like I said, bear with us if we're not the most excited today. <laughs> um, uh, I found it. I can get a pair for 15 bucks as well. 15 bucks for Shack shoes? Yeah. You get them out. There they are. Oh! Can ball, ball out for 15 race. bucks. I don't know what you're wearing them. That's what you're Tis the season. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll maybe have like uh, Steel playing in the background. Yes. Um, Shazam. Kazam. 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 Shazam is the supposedly non existent. Okay, that was real. Sinbad. Sinbad. That was real. I swear it is. I, as soon as someone mentions, hey, you remember that genie movie with uh, Sinbad? I was like, yeah, Shazam. They didn't even have to tell me the name of it. And I'm like, yeah. And supposedly it never existed. That's a lie. Absolutely. Did we t discuss this last podcast? I feel like we did. I don't know. Well, it came back up again if we did. Yeah. It drives um, us nuts. We, we have very limited mental capacity. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. What else has happened since the last time we broadcast? Oh, SNES mini pre-orders went up, then down, then up, then down, thanks to Walmart. Um, we all had our hearts broken. Thanks a lot, Samuel Walton. Yeah. Um, I know 
myself, I pre-ordered one for myself and my brother. Both were canceled, and they told me they were good, and they told me they were canceled, and they told me they were good, and then finally canceled. See, I never got the their good email. I just got one that, hey, your order was declined or canceled, and then I got another one three days later. We're really, really sorry that it got canceled. And I'm like, you don't have to, like, say you're sorry again. I understand they got canceled. I'm upset enough as it is. Just leave it, leave <laughs> don't it alone. Don't rub it in. Yeah, don't keep open, don't keep opening the wound. Yeah. Yeah, I think we talked about games that we wanted on that thing the last podcast, yeah. and it had me really hyped about it and, like, excited. And then uh, my hopes and dreams were crushed. So, um, yeah. Anybody else uh, sad about their SNES mini pre-order game? Yeah, is there anybody out there that actually did pre-order one and had it shut down? You know, Probably everyone, because Walmart canceled all of the pre-orders. Right. Well done. So, yeah. Um, what else? Trying to think of some more games that I picked up recently. Um, Imperium. I got a copy of Imperium <laughs> recently. Uh, Someone else is enjoying which, it. Which right? uh, slipped through my fingers. You can talk to Josh about that. It, uh, it happens. Traded it for some shop stock unintentionally, but. Uh, it, went, it went to a good home. A decent home. It went to a terrible home. You'll never see it again. That is true. It'll just be sitting on a shelf. For those who don't know, dust. Imperium is a Super Nintendo shooter by, by Vic Tokai, uh, one of my favorite developers. Oh, I picked up another Vic Tokai game recently that Josh will not get his uh, dirty hands on called Cryon Conquest. It's sort of like Mega Man with a witch, and it's uh, stupid hard. Like, really, really hard. And uh, we're going to play that at some point. Oh, oh we, we, we could play the worst Victor Kai game ever made. We could play uh, oh, Hell Golf. Hell Golf. I forgot about Hell Golf. <laughs> it's the worst golf. I have played many a golf game in my life. That is definitely that's the worst golf game I've ever played. Yeah, it is on Saturn. Right? Saturn, yeah. Which that doesn't help it either. So. What was the actual name of that? It was like Valeria Golf. V- v- I don't remember. It started with a V. We just called it Hell Golf because it had had a, it had a, had a, had a, it had a golf it had a like a fairway and a green surrounded by lava and volcanoes. Okay. Yeah, Hell Golf. The, the cover art get you know oh. made us pretty pumped about it, and then we played Recent it. Recent grabs. Yeah, I didn't get it, but Dylan got it. Ooh, Summer Assault for Turbo. Um, Absolutely, Mr. Rob is holding it. Mr. Rob's a holding quick it. Quick so breakdown on that game. The game starts off. It seems kind of like sci-fi, steampunky at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, sh- some lady's gonna send in some bad guys to destroy the world, and that's and you're like, okay, so I'm probably some guy who's gonna fight the bad guys. Um, no, you're not. You're a slinky. You are a slinky a that slinky. is attached to a wall. So okay. you're you're a slinky that only traverses like sides of a wall, but you can shoot projectiles. Yeah. And you're shooting like looks like chess pieces. Yeah. And uh, once you finish the level in the allocated amount of time, you will fight a boss, which then you have a timer for that as well. Uh, the bosses are all uh, zodiac zodiac signs. Yeah. Signs, yeah. All right. So I Super recently weird. grabbed this game uh, from a new friend that we made, who's really big into Turbo and other games. And we traded for some stuff, and I knew that Dylan needed this one. Um, now the impress because Dylan collects Atlas games, and this is one of the few that he has left to add to his collection. And um, we were always under the impression that this was a puzzle game. It's not. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. I really don't. Like I say, you shoot projectiles, but yet you're just... You're literally a slinky. You know what? It all makes sense now. Summer assault. Like, somersault. And you're a slinky flipping over. Flipping over. That's terrible. Please tell me that's I, not. I hope that's not what they were trying it's to get at. It's S-O-M-E-R, assault. But, In all... Like a somersault. But... Why have like an Egyptian goddess on the front with hieroglyphics in the background? It's Atlas. And it it's uh, Atlas. The early nineties. They you were. Have to they were. A story for they the were. Slinky. They were pretty obscure. What, yeah. what would yeah. be any other Slinky story? You can't have like a Slinky schmuck. Yes, you could. It'd be absolutely awesome. Well, that's oh. pretty much what it is. Like you're a Slinky falling off a building. What if you had Uniracers but with Slinkies? Like you're going down stairs on different tracks. That'd be kind of cool. Could be neat, but the game kind of plays like a, I don't know, like a slow contra uh, had a baby with Ninja Gaiden because there's there's like some platforming that's involved in dodging, kind of like in a shmup. Because 
the corners of the walls will have little turrets on it shooting at you. Meanwhile, you got little guys walking around. But actually, ground. actually, yeah, it is a lot like a shmup though, because you have the enemies that are flying at you and you're shooting projectiles at them. And when you do blow them up, they give you power ups and stuff yes. like that. So it's very shmup like. Now I kind of I might let you borrow it. I'll think about it. That's fine. I'll All get right. another copy. Oh hey, if we can get a turbo in here for one of our let's plays, we might just. Let, let everybody see it from here. No, I didn't take the last one home. Oh, Dylan took over turbo last night. I did. Hey. I have. I no longer have trade credit at Rad Junk for the first time in a, a I year. I think Dylan has had the longest standing trade credit uh, <laughs> like balance <laughs> with the store ever because he always brings good stuff. He yeah. builds his credit up. He's very picky about his games, which is not a bad thing. He just has a very very specific taste. It's either golf games or Atlas titles. Or like well, quir quir sports quirky games. sports games. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Dylan joined the Turbo Graphics Club. I did. Well, I got rid of. I had a uh, complete one in a very nice box that I traded to the Dave and Michael, like two and a half, three years ago, and I totally regret that. Like it was beautiful, and uh, I remember that. Ever, I yeah, ever it. since then, I've always wanted another one, and figured why not go ahead and blow that trade credit. I had just the right amount. That was a good one too. Good worth definitely, definitely worth oh, it. Oh, some of the best games ever are on Turbo. I know that's like it's sort of like an obscure. But the games library. look so good. They really I think do. the quality control within Turbo Graphics was, you know, you could buy a cheap game and you still end up with an okay playable game. And this is cra yeah. it's crazy to me that it came out. It came out before the Super Nintendo for sure. But did it, it come out before? I believe. What that's year? What year did the uh, came Genesis came come out? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. So yeah, I mean, it was a legit contender, like. Or it should have been, but it just didn't get the push that the Sega, Sega Genesis, Pretty much Super Nintendo release. got. Uh, not really limited release, but I think it was only sold in major cities. And um, it was it's a Hudson Soft product. Yeah, I mean, it was huge in Japan. Huge in Japan. It went for yeah. years as the PC engine in Japan. Um, however, in America, it was really crazy because it was one of the first consoles with a CD drive. And uh, where did the CD drive come out for? That? I think the same year. There's some craziness going on outside. Uh, <laughs> I think there's some old guys getting kind of um, intoxicated, rowdy, rowdy at the bar next some door. Spiked Kool-Aid. <laughs> some spiked Kool-Aid. Maybe some spiked insure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Turbo Graphics is cool. If you don't, if you don't know what it is, check it out. Um, it's really neat. We're like staring at this screen. It's uh, the game we're gonna play in a little bit. It's called Android Assault. On Sega CD, this is a shmup where you're a mech, and it looks like Gundam meets like Lords of Thunder, and it's got a killer soundtrack. Yes, and, uh, story is how I got introduced to this game. Um, David Michael, the brought, David Michael, yep. the David Michael, Sir David Michael, yes, Lord David David <laughs> Michael, Monsieur God Emperor David, David Michael. God. <laughs> 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 um, Brought this into the store, and I did not own a Sega CD yet. I uh, I saw it, and I saw the Mac on the back, so I kind of like nerded out for a second. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy it. So I bought it. Um, didn't get to play it for probably I don't know, like a week or two, and I finally broke down and bought a Sega CD. Uh, this is probably my favorite shmup of all time. Um, yeah, with a close second to Lightning Force on the Sega Genesis. And y'all be able to see this one today, and we got a copy of Lightning Force here too, so you'll be able to play a quick glance at that one. I'm getting messages on my personal Facebook page from people asking whose Android Assault that is on the table. Uh. <laughs> Sorry guys, not for sale. It's Todd's. Neither is Summer Assault. Neither is Summer Assault. Just, just making sure. Uh, if we do get a copy in, don't worry, you guys will know. Uh, it'll have to be the second copy we get in because I'll be taking the first one home. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um... That's that game. What else did we say we're going to talk about? We talked about Super Nintendos. Talked about Trade Night. Sorry. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Bill Williams collection. Oh, we got in do we need to show off the Bill Williams game uh, game of the week? Oh, right. we do. Bill Williams game of the week. Here we go. For the Amiga computer released in 1987. Let's see if I can get it in this shot. Sinbad. And the Throne of the Falcon. All right, it is a Cinemaware interactive movie, right? Wait, it's Cinemaware? Yeah, he worked with Cinemaware. Like, two, the two or three games he released on Amiga was Cinemaware. There's another Cinemaware game over there. 
Um, Lord of the Rising Sun? Yeah. 512k required. Mm. That's Cinemaware, right? Yeah, I don't think he was involved in this. Do you have the picture of build we can throw up there? Oh, I don't have this picture. I'm going to try and get it in the camera. Um, so... <laughs> I'll try and pull it up in a second. <laughs> just toss it at the Thank camera you. and tell them to pause it. <laughs> just, just, I'll, uh, it's close. We'll, we'll post this picture at some point. But, I have um, it saved on my phone if you want me to Imagine, shoot, like, look imagine you're a game developer wet. in the 80s, <laughs> and you're a super nerd, but you want to look super cool, but all you know is late 70s swag. Yeah. And you just made a bunch of money selling your video games, which everybody told you would be garbage. And, um... He looks like Weird Al with aviators on. And Weird Al with aviators and like a, a silk robe. Yeah. That, sitting in a director's chair. There's a reason we love Bill Williams and this is it. Yeah. Master designer. Bill Master Williams. designer Bill Williams. Um, we're going to touch a lot on Bill Williams. His wife did the artwork. Oh my god, Martha Williams did the artwork for yeah, the, the game. front. That's his wife. Did a good job. Excellent job, Martha. We come into you. Yeah, check out the wedgie on this show. <laughs> That's massive. Like they didn't even take some time what? to fix that. All right, I'm gonna try and get this picture you, not of the wedgie, but of the uh, get the wedgie of actual Bill Williams. Um, you want me to try? Cause I got long arms. Yeah, Dylan, why don't you give it a shot? So uh, then you can look at the computer and tell me yeah. how it works. So uh, the man and the chair to the and left. The chair to the left is Bill Williams. I mean, if you can't on. tell, he's got a sweet, like, Jerry Curl mullet thing going on. Is that good? And, yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, thanks. And he is a fantastic that human being. Cool. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was good. Good job, Dylan. Good You're reach. Welcome. Thanks. I appreciate uh, Dylan it. Dylan picked that up recently. We are going on a quest to pick up every Bill Williams game in the most pristine condition that we can, they as are, well as the systems to play them on. They are very obscure, by the way. Like, if you f see them come up on eBay, I mean, that game usually sells for... 175 I think on eBay. Wow. I got super super lucky. I talked the guy down to like 55. Wow. So, yeah, so um they very rarely come up on eBay. Um probably the most common Bill Williams games are either Bart's Nightmare on Super Nintendo, Monopoly on, or on NES. Monopoly on NES. Yep. Uh, the first game we were aware of from him was Salmon Run, the Atari Exchange program game. Yeah, we talked about that last podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, still can't find a good one on eBay. They're just actually, I'm, I missed out on a lot that had one. It had like six or seven Atari cassette tapes, and I forgot that it was auction style, and it went for like fifteen bucks. Oh. Yeah, I know. Actually, no, it went for like twelve. Oh. Yeah, I, I, it, it, it made me sick. It, it made me sick. Dylan failed. Yes, um, yes. I however, did. he did pick up Sinbad, so we got that sweet pe picture of Bill Williams. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I just want to point out this really cool. Uh, I don't know what to call it. It's like a shadow box with pearlers in it that our friend Allie and her husband Nick gave us for our one-year anniversary, which was yesterday uh, for trade night. This thing is insanely intricate and probably the best display of pearlers I have ever seen. It's incredible. Allie, Nick, thank you guys so much. Uh, you were the first customers in the store when we opened. I let you dig through boxes because I was in panic mode. <laughs> and um, I'm pretty sure... Nick picked up a Sesame Street game from us. Oh, it was Mickey Mouse. Um, also, we are sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts this week. <laughs> the are the uh, you have the strawberry cronut over there. Okay. Strawberry cronut. Yeah, the croissant donut. Oh. Yeah, we're. Like I said, it's been a long day. <laughs> we needed, a long we, night last night. We needed a sugar fix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's our Bill Williams game of the week. Uh, like I said, we picked up the At another Atari 800 computer last night, thanks to our friend Derry with the disk drive and the cassette drive. Complete um, box. So that makes two full setups that we have for Atari 800s. And one 400. Yeah. And a 400. And the little sister. Um, next, we need an Atari 800 XL. Mm -hmm. Which we could just do the RAM upgrade to one of the 800s, which would be fine. If, uh, if anyone, if anyone out there has an Amiga that they want to kind of get rid of, yeah, we're looking for like an Amiga 500 or 1000. Because we can't really play these Bill Williams um, games. I also picked up a bunch of other Amiga games this week that Sam nearly killed me over because um, I got them for myself, and they're just hey, 
hand me that Cygnosis one. I just the reason I got these games. Um, I got donut on my hand, so you're gonna. Have that's it. fine. Uh, I'm gonna hand it, handle that's it anyways. Fine. Uh, because Amiga games are just weird and obscure, and um, this one's a Cygnosis game that came with a T-shirt. I'm What's gonna that? have to hunt down the T-shirt. But check this out. This is a computer game, and uh, it looks pretty cool. It's like a side-scrolling, uh, sort of like action adventure. Almost looks like. The Adventures of Link on NES. I know you're not going to be able to see that. Um, I don't even know how to say the name of this game. Obidus? Yeah, I'm not going to use Yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, I'll butcher it. It's O-B-I-T-U-S. But this thing looks cool. And, like, the Amiga games, like the Sinbad game that Dylan just handed us, um, they're, like, big box older PC games. And there's a ton of games on here that were also on, like, ported to consoles, like uh, Alien Syndromes over there. Um, I'm trying to think of some more. Zool. If you ever played oh, Zool? God. It's bad on console, but I looked up the Amiga version. It looks fantastic. I, I think I played it on Jaguar and was not a fan. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely an interesting one. But yeah, so uh, looking for some more old computer games. Um, we all want retro computer rooms set up in our house between the Commodores, the Ataris. Rock band. Um, I was just thinking. Journey. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like a Journey, looks like a journey album. Yeah. album cover, yeah. Um, I dig it. <laughs> so, yeah, we got two Commodore 64s, two Atari 800s, an Atari 400. We need, uh, I guess, the, the big ones to want to hit after this, probably Tandy, yeah, Amiga. Tandy TRS-80. There's a Japanese-only Sega computer called... SG-1000. SG-1000 S, and there's, like, one called SC-3000. Um, there's also the MSX. So. MSX would be good. Uh, there's Snatcher on the MSX, which would be cool. And apparently the best version of Metal Gear. Hmm. I don't know. So, yeah, there's there's those. Um, yeah. So, yeah, retro computers. We like them. We don't just do they're fun to games. They're fun to fool around on. Uh, the, the Atari stuff comes with cool programs sometimes. You got the, you got the word processor with this one this Oh, week. I got two copies of Atari Writer and yeah. a copy of... Uh, conversational in Italian. Italian, yeah. And this thing is like super cool. It's like a plastic binder almost, and you open it up, and it's like six cassettes with the program. I don't, I don't know. I like weird stuff. Um, That's interesting though. Uh, yeah. Two books on how to use Atari Basic. Yeah, those are cool. Um, the the thing about the computers is like when you've when you've played almost every game that you want to play on consoles. Like, I can't think of one that I haven't actually played or had the ability to play in some form or fashion. The computers are cool because we find a lot of obscure, weird stuff on it. Yeah. And, like, we find copies of, like, like copied and pirated games. and it's just, I don't know. It's cool to find odd things that you wouldn't think about because there's only a limited number, a finite amount of NES cartridges out there. And you can find stuff that's just super weird and... Almost like indie programs and things like that. Yeah, like like last time we talked about that Xtar, uh, Atari Exchange program. That's basically the first indie, you know, system. So we didn't come, we didn't even know about that until we started uh, fooling with the Atari 400. So just stumbling upon different like aspects of gaming history like that. That's that's what I love. Yeah, about I actually it. like the packaging of early gaming uh, when it comes from like the old PC games with a big box and put yeah. a little bit more into the marketing to try and make it look more attractive, yeah, at least exactly. in America. Yeah, and it, it's just, that's a lot like how they used to do with uh, vinyl. Like, vinyl artwork was yeah. absolutely incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's like, a lot of people make fun of us for it and think it's just, like, junk, and most of it is. Don't get us wrong. It's rad junk. But it's, uh, it's fun to just mess around with. It gives us something else to do. Another nerdy hobby. Yeah. Um, you find games like weird Doom ripoffs or like Bakugan or. Yeah. Yeah, Bakugan. That was like a that... shooter, wasn't it? Yeah, you're like a Beyblade looking thing. And. Uh... Sorry, Todd's like checking the comments section. <laughs> yeah. I was just making sure something. See, y'all are being pretty active. So back to Bakugan. Um, is it game on advanced? And on the Wii. And on the and Wii. On There's the a Wii, Wii. Oh, Wii yeah, yeah. Bakugan yes. yeah. 
I always called it Bakugan. <laughs> Bakugan? I think it's Bakugan. It's good. It's Bakugan. It, probably, it probably is. I don't know what the heck this one is. Those, Santa, one are those, we pronouncing that right? Is it one of those, uh, Is it Bakugan? I think it's Bakugan. It is Bakugan. Okay. It's, w- it's one of those... It mis- might be Bakugan. Hey, y'all, y'all got that Bakugan game over there? Bakugan. <laughs> <laughs> is that like a Goemon ripoff? What? Sure. Bakugan. I don't know. I don't even know what kind of game it is. Maybe it's based on toys. Kind of like Exo Squad that I played a few weeks ago, or, uh... I thought Dylan was saying it correctly, says Austin. <laughs> Attaboy. Attaboy. We're on the right page. Austin, it's Bakugan. It's clearly Bakugan. <laughs> anyway. Anything else is nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from Bakugan. Um, um, but yeah, like, old computers are cool. Yes. <laughs> or we're just dumb nerds that... I don't know. There's something about it. Like uh, when I hooked up the Atari 400 at the house, I was gonna play this game. Is a total knockoff of Space Invaders. You remember the space game that came with the Atari 400? Stuff you gave me. I thought it was Space Invaders. No, it was something different. Something like. No, it Gal- was. Um, it was definitely a ripoff. You still got like a city or something. Are you talking it? about the cassette one? Yes. Oh, the cassette one was like a ripoff of Galaga. Yeah, but what was it, it called? Was like, oh, it was awful. It um, wasn't that bad. Wasn't I played awful. it. it was I'm talking about the name. It was. Just no, like, remember that was the first cassette game we got working. Yeah, yeah I took it yeah. home and uh, I was hooking up and. Uh, it's the definition of primitive, but. My wife's in the cool. kitchen and I'm getting this thing up and you know you have to put the cassette in, you have to hit play, and then after you already typed in some stupid code that took me ten minutes to find in the book <laughs> to, to the game. And then all of a sudden, there's like this 90s printer sound coming from my computer, and I'm like, uh, is it working? What's going on? And then all of a sudden, like, the worst, like, four-bit sounding music came through. For, th- for those that don't know, when you load a game off of tape, it doesn't, like, actively read the game. Like, it would read, a s- like, a disc you in your PlayStation. You have to listen to the whole tape so, all the yeah, way through. It, like, it reads the data off the whole tape. It loads that into the memory of the computer, and right. then you can play your game. Well, see, yeah. that, that's why like, I was confused when we booted it up because I, I didn't know how it worked. So I was like, well, if we play one a, a cassette game, what happens if you get to the end of the cassette tape? Do you have to rewind it and play the level over again? Like, well, how, <laughs> how, does, how does this work? Because, you know, what's that, uh, what's that weird system that I had that I traded to uh, Dave? The Action um, Max? No, the Action. the Action Max. That Action Max actually plugs into your VCR. And you play games off of a VHS tape. So that's how that actually worked. Was you the game? You just play through it, and you basically just kept your high score. And then you rewound it and played it again. I actually have two Action Maxes right now. Very uh, obscure, very weird. But to be honest, I actually thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. Like like a uh, just a cool idea for the nineties. Yeah, it's neat. Um, was it nineties? Yeah, VHS. VHS. It was VHS like ninety eighties. Like yeah. yeah, no, it was like nine early to mid nineties. It's beta man. <laughs> Whatever, Betamax failed. Laser, <laughs> laser disc. Um, <laughs> thank you also for calling it a VCR. That's what it is. What do people call it? Well, uh, recently I've I've noticed that a lot of people call it a VHS player. Remember how v- VCR was just like common term? Like mm-hmm. That's what it is. You're like, oh, put the tape in the VCR. Like, yeah. A lot of people call them VHS players now. and like. Well, that's because probably the, you know, the, the younger crowd that you see in your stores didn't have to deal with them. You got any of them Nintendo tapes? <laughs> Nintendo tapes. <laughs> I love to adjust the tracking for 10 minutes before I get to watch my movie. <laughs> tracking? Nobody remembers what tracking is. Oh, God. <laughs> what a nightmare. Wait, remember oh, where people have, like, VHS rewind Yeah, the, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> specifically just to rewind your tapes. Yeah, because you wanted the special rewind. rewinder, because if you didn't use it, it could stretch out the... I think it was because it was stretch out of the tape or ruin the heads and the VCR. I don't know. Either that or Blockbuster would charge you a bajillion dollars. That is true. Oh, yeah. Or, and you could get the uh, rewinders that had like themes, like the old like 1960s Chevy car. Oh, yeah. Rewinders. I about those. Yeah. Can we start collecting rewinders? God. That would be the worst thing to collect. <laughs> hey, I mean, <laughs> if we get Action Max games, we've got to rewind them. I have two Action Max games. So, you know, I have a Pokemon VCR. What? That I found on and like, a Let Hello go. Kitty microwave. I have a Hello Kitty microwave. If anyone's interested, in uh, just contact Dylan. Pink Hello <laughs> yeah. Kitty. If Hello you are Kitty a pink microwave. Hello Kitty microwave, and I'm talking, this thing is like pink, pink, legit. Like it's a good microwave. Yeah. Um, it's a, yeah. It's not like an easy bake oven. We've cooked many hot pockets in it. <laughs> many uh, a pizza roll. We uh, we picked it up somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. Um, at this, I guess, the state sale place. Yeah, yeah, state sale place. Yeah. 
I bought an Odyssey 2000 by Magnavox, and Dylan bought a Hello Kitty microwave. <laughs> I thought it was a good investment. So you got Dylan got the better thing, actually. Yes, because his. Didn't I'm work. looking at that Odyssey 2000 right now. His didn't work. In the box. No, the light turns on if you plug it in the wall and don't use the. Um, it functions. Basically, the box looks really cool, but it had batteries yeah. in there since like the '60s. Oh, it was so great. And, yeah. Uh, I yeah, know it, it didn't come out in the '60s. I was being exaggerated. Yeah, I'm waiting for the first yeah, I know. guy to correct us. <laughs> it'll probably be Austin. He'll probably publish a paper on the Odyssey 2000. <laughs> <laughs> November of 1974, guys. And uh, and a reputable, 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 source. reputable a legit journal. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a diary? Yeah, it doesn't matter as long as you're published. Yes. So. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. Well, the thing is with those old systems like that, I remember like my first Atari. It took me forever to get it to work on my my TV because it's I don't know if it's just the old signal or what, but um I don't know if we like just maybe fooled around with it and actually plugged it up something that was. I got it. I got it to work. Um, apparently, you can either have it plugged into the wall, and it <laughs> Austin, I don't want your Earth bound. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it in his face, awesome. Rub, rub it in his face. Uh, that's fair. Though. That's fair. So there's like a generic, what the hell do you think, 6D batteries in that thing? Oh, my God. Yeah, it was between 4 and 6. 6D six battery basic box um, that hold those batteries in there. But you can also plug it into the wall. You have either option. Yeah. Um, when I got it, I, I plugged it into the wall. The light came on. and So I assumed it worked. No weird burning smells. I guess. I've smelled a lot of burning from Ataris, um, and I hate working on Ataris. That's why I give them forty years old Genesis RF adapters for better connection. Um, I hate old electronics. You know, next but yet yeah, yeah, have an entire. Hey, won't it be? Won't next year be the fortieth anniversary of the Atari Twenty Six Hundred? Didn't it come out in seventy eight. I believe it did actually. Seventy seven or seventy eight. The Dave, if you're watching, correct yes. us. I know you remember when it came out. Um, <laughs> yeah, what were you, like 30? <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Dave. Hey, the Dave completed his North American Virtual Boy yes, set. Yes, with, he did. Uh, Waterworld. Yeah, that was a good grab. He got Jack Bros from us and Waterworld and Tetris? Tetris. And um, he a, knocked out all 14. That's a cool library to have. Yeah, it's not super hard to acquire the games, Jack Bros being the most Jack rare Bros and most expensive, but I think Jack Bros is generally about 300 bucks, which for the last game you need on a system, that's not that bad with games like no. Samson hitting 1200 now on NES. And yeah. I can't even think of it. Dinosaur Peak, I don't know, it's that 900. Yeah, 8 or 9. What's the, what's the heaviest hitting SNES title? Uh, uh Ghana is up there. I don't know the uh well are we counting the military thing? Max? Yeah. No, I mean that yeah. wasn't like a retail release on the Hagane, Arrow Fighters. Arrow Fighters would probably be up there. Um gosh. I feel like Hagane is just not as rare as people think it is. It's, like it's a, a good game though. Like, it's good and I know that it's it you know, it's limited, Arrow Fighters hard to good. find. But that, that's like that's like Shantae to me. I don't think Shantae is as rare as some other Game Boy Color games. Because I see it way more often than a few others. I can't think of any other like four-digit games though for the Super Nintendo. What's uh, Metal Warriors isn't that high, is it? It's like two fifty. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, the rest of that kinda, it sucks. Your mid-tier stuff's in like the two, three, four hundreds with the SNES. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You got like X three. You got Evo. Um, some terrible Earthbound game. You got, um, <laughs> I, no, Earthbound isn't even rare. That yeah. game's like that game nah. is all hype, all hype. But it does look cool in a big box, a, though. Cult, cult following. Something you'd probably want to get rid of for around I don't know five six hundred dollars. <laughs> Austin, I agree a hundred percent. Space Marauder is rare. Space Marauder, I think I see that. I think I see three to four Shantes for every Space Marauder. Hmm. And that's nobody cares about Game Boy. That's the problem. Is like yeah. handheld stuff's cool because it's still relatively cheap. There's some good games, but if you're going for a collection or if you're trying to like, I don't know, 
whatever. Like it's the, the two potato games on Game Boy. What are There's they? So much shovelware. On what are, what are they doing? All right, Spud's Adventure on Game Boy, which is Atlas. It's like probably around two hundred now. And then okay. Amazing Tater, which is also an Atlas game on Game Boy. It's like two fifty. So golly, yeah, stupid potato games. Potato games. Potato games that are worth two hundred plus. <laughs> yeah, it's dumb. Oh, what is the one that's on Game Boy Color? It's like uh, Wendy the Witch. Is that what it's called, Sam? It kind of looks like Magical Chase, but it's Game Boy Color. Super obscure. I think it's called Wendy the Witch. I've never heard of it. Um, Dave was telling me about it, and it looks like a super fun game. Mega Man 5. Ugh. Get rid of you, Todd, for <laughs> 500. Todd, I would never get rid of you for 500. I appreciate that. I'd probably do you for 100. That's it's fair. It's not fair. And hey, how, how, uh, how obscure is that Deja Vu 1 plus 2? Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I know you were like all hyped up about it, and then I saw uh, somebody had a card only one here. Oh, uh, Jerry. Jerry had, a, Jerry had a card only one. Jerry, call me. And I was like, I, and I told him, I was like, for hey, uh, that's, that's one of Joe's favorites. So, all right, so I've been collecting some obscure Game Boy games, because like I said, Game Boy's still cheap. Uh, it's such a waste of time, but like, I'm tired of going after like, the tough stuff, you know what I mean? And it's fun to find something you've never seen before. So I was trying to find good games on Game Boy that haven't really been noticed, and uh, I looked up Quicks. Deja Vu. Quicks is too common. Kicks, there's no That was you. the first Game Boy game I ever had. Yeah, but it's the greatest Game Boy game um, and NES game. But Deja Vu 1 and 2 is like the NES game, Deja Vu, and it essentially is a combo cart on Game Boy Color, and it's kind of like a adventure, it almost plays like a visual novel, and um, it's super obscure on Game Boy, and I ordered one to play, and it showed up sealed. So now I cannot open it. You can just take the plastic off. Uh, oh, something I got at trade night last night, forgot about. A sealed Skies of Arcadia on Dreamcast. Solid. Very cool. I like how uh, Quix is now in the image, covered up by your Dunkin' Donut straw from your iced coffee. He's going like that. Yeah, Rob's holding a more important game, so. <laughs> so, those that don't know, this game's super fun. Um, basically, what you do is you have uh, your screen. Yeah, we, we talked about it on the last podcast. Did we? Yeah, well, yeah. When it was, I mentioned how it's like Jazz Ball from the old Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, oh, were we talking about Busy Land? Did we talk about that game? I don't remember. Kokoma Night in Busyland. Go for it. We know you want to. Well, is that the game you had in the Super Yeah, the Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it. We don't have to talk okay, about okay. it. Okay, okay. I won't go back to that. <laughs> I just couldn't remember. Cause, um, I'm with Josh. I don't like it. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised. Yeah, I don't like it. Sculptor's Cut for 64. Sculptor's Cut. Get out of here, Eric. Hey, Eric, uh, when you get a chance, post a picture of that really awesome thing you found this morning. Uh... It's a Nintendo thing. Also, Eric, thanks for coming out last night, man. That was super cool. Um, all the way from Andalusia, Alabama. Nice. And uh, he oh, brought yeah. some good stuff. Some really good stuff. Um, let's see. There are no good OG Game Boy games. Kicks. Pokemon. Pokemon Red um, and Blue. Enough said. Uh, Tetris. I mean, that, I mean, that was the yeah. original time waster in the doctor's office in the nineties. Yeah, I would use Tetris to test Game Boys, and I always end up playing it for like two hours. Yeah, so yeah, super addictive. I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, Return of Samus. That's yeah, a great Metroid game. Two. Come on, that game's amazing. Um, that's all I played. Game Boy. Oh, that is Austin. terrible. I think Austin's right. <laughs> I will send you some pictures. I've got some super weird pretty decent Game Boy games that I played through the other day. I think you'll like a few of them. Uh, one is something that I found. It's sort of like a beat-em-up, but it's like a three-quarter view beat-em-up, and it's side-scrolling. It's something Force, like Maximum Force or Mega Force. I don't remember. I'll have to, I'll have to look that one up, and I'll post pictures. Um, it's pretty neat, though. You know what game is underrated on Game Boy, I think, is Super Mario Land 2. Yeah. That game is that's a really Six good platform. Coins? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Really good platform. Doesn't that have some uh like stuff that's exclusive to when you play it in a Super Game Boy? 
might have to try that out. It might be just color schemes or something, but I can't remember. It's something like that. I think I remember when that game came out. I remember being a kid and they were showing like, oh, play it in your Super Game Boy. Like, blah. I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly how they said it. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. That was the commercial. Blah. Sold a million copies. <laughs> Oh, I got some new PC Engine games in. Uh, PC Engine is the Japanese Turbo Graphics. We're gonna let's play some of those soon. I got um, Darius, which is a shooter. I pretty much got all shmups. I got Proteus. Darius. I got Proteus, yep. and then I got um, I can't remember the name of it right now. But you're two like muscle dudes in thongs, again. and you fly horizontally and shoot beams out of your head. That's a Joe game. <laughs> That's a Japanese game, if I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah, we're definitely going to play the crap out of that. Donkey Kong on GB. That was solid. Donkey Kong Land? No. Or the arcade port? Neither. Donkey Kong I'm Land actually, was I'm going to say it. I don't right. really like Donkey Kong games. I love Don Donkey Kong Country. It's incredible. I played Donkey Kong Sam's 64. Sam's about to fight somebody over here. Yeah. Um, I'll win. I, th I like Donkey Kong Country. I only played the second and third one. You never played the first one? Uh, wow. That's one of the best platformers. I know when we were kids, my brothers and I put a lot of time into them. They were fun. Um, it, it was neat because they had like cool graphics for the time, the pre rendered oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, Bionic Commando. Game. That's, that's actually, a Capcom game, right? Yeah, that's good. That is a good Game Boy game. I don't think I've ever played it on Game Boy. I played it Street briefly Fighter on the NES. Street Fighter 2. I had that as a kid. Street Fighter 2 on Game Boy. I had yeah, that. I had it too. It was awesome. It was Nathan. The one, the one fighting game that I actually liked growing up. Hey, Nathan, you watch it. Or I'm going to take your Zune that I'm working on. <laughs> I'm Nathan thinks that you can take me in a fight. He's right. He's wrong. Todd's kind of slow. He's, he's right. Yeah. He waddles. Um, <laughs> I'm going to unplug him. <laughs> I'm already unplugged. Oh, good for you. <laughs> yeah, diabetic jokes. They never end. I'm about to eat a donut. Oh, no, they end. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah. Dylan, what other games do we got on that table? We got like a oh, random table uh, of stuff oh, over here. Oh, here you go. We, Run maybe, maybe, I, may, maybe I can talk Joe into letting us play this. Me and Todd love it. Um, Run Saber Man. on the Super Nintendo. Yes, it's an Atlas game, but it's an incredible co op. It's Ooh, like what? Ninja Gaiden co op game. Yeah, so that's that's all you need Wait, to know. Wait, it's co-op? Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why I didn't like it. Oh, it's we awesome. We actually told you that a little earlier ago. I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't hear that part. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. It's incredible. It's good. Um, uh, what else we got? Oh, here's your little your little baby over here. If you want to oh. get that. Picked little. this one up last night. Arrow Flash. It's a renovation title. It is also a shmup. If you can't tell, we really like shmups around here. Uh, um, grab the PlayStation. Give me the bottom. The, here's the best. This is what sold me on Arrow Flash. You guys ready for this? This sure. is the first sentence on the back. In the 30th century, Viking terrorists led by the vicious great Halagi are plundering and destroying planets throughout the galaxy. Viking terrorists. Viking terrorists. I don't appreciate them. Now there has been an terrorists. assault on the laboratory of the renowned scientist Dr. Zarek Nee who, in a state of near death, has summoned his granddaughter. <laughs> this just gets ridiculous as you keep reading. Uh, it has attracted the attention of barbaric Viking terrorists. Uh, Dr. Keen pressed a keycard in her arm, turned into a giant monster, access to chameleons. Um, <laughs> chameleons. And the last line of this is, use this, save Earth. That's fair. Um, so, I'm pretty sure renovation is similar to... Working designs in the sense that they took Japanese games and brought them to America. So I wonder if this was a different game in Japan. Sam, can you Google that real quick? Arrow Flash on Genesis and see if it was a different game in Japan. Um, I mean, like I said, I was already sold when it was a shmup, but then I read that first sentence and I was like, I need this. Um, That's the thing, like the the backstories for a lot of the 90s and even 80s games were just so over the top. Oh, they got the other backstories for other uh, oh, animation games. Oh, oh, Whiplash! I, I want to read one, so... That one seems... Uh, in the 22nd century, Earth Defense Headquarters detected a huge unidentified object approaching our system. A probe revealed three of our own Alpha-type robot spaceships at its core. Yeah, it's just uh, nothing crazy. 
You've been transported 100 years in the future where the latest wave in warfare is New Age Power Suits. Which game is that? Final Zone, which I don't think I've seen that one before. I have not seen that. Uh, Granada. That's uh, a good game. That's a tank game. I think it's top-down, uh, multiple-path shooter where you're a tank. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. But other than that, yeah, I mean, nothing as crazy as uh, future Viking terrorists. But. Is Final Zone a shmup? Final Zone kind of looks like uh, Akari Warriors in a way that you're like just running around doing stuff. I had Whip Brush at one point. I don't know if I still do. See what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Um, Whip Brush they, looks good. Do they also do Vapor Trail? Yeah, like the airplane sim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very similar to Aero Fighters. It's a top-down shmup. Well, vapor Trail is? Yeah. I, uh, from the front cover of it, I thought it was like a sim. Oh, no, no, no. You would actually really like that game. Uh, Vapor Trail on Genesis. I'm surprised you don't have it. Yeah. So, yeah. Arrow Flash. You'll we'll probably play that at some point in the future. Kicks Neo on PlayStation. It's what? It's Arrow Flash. Oh, really? Weird. So, I don't know if you want to talk about this one. So, we already talked about Quicks or Kicks or whatever. Um, picked up a PlayStation 1 copy. I did not know that they've made it on the PlayStation 1, which is kind of cool. Taito game. Just like the NES version. What was that tagline? For um, the old one is the only game in town. The only game in town. Taito. That's uh, all you need to know. Yeah, now it doesn't have one, but now it gives Kicks a story where it was just like a mindless, like puzzly arcade game. Now uh, you just defend your world from alien invaders by drawing lines. By drawing lines. This sort game came out in two thousand three. True. Oh, three? That's late release that PS1. Late. Super late release. Huh. I gotta pee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> you guys want to see us get this some... Is there anything else we need to touch on? Do you really want to do that? Oh, we have something that we're going to play. Just we can, can we... Let's just show it. Here. So, uh... Some garbage. <laughs> Our but. Buddy West picked this up from somebody at trade night a while back. Uh, it's kind of like an NES classic knockoff. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. It has 500 games in one. It's a Chinese clone system. Now, here's what's funny about this. The names of the games. So, you plug it in, right? You turn it on. It's like any other Chinese clone system. You have a list of games. And uh, if you fire up, it's got lots of Contra on it, lots of Ninja Turtles. You know, the popular titles that they thought would sell this thing. Now, once you start to go down the list... <laughs> You'll select a game, and you know when your NES will get dirty or your game will get dirty, you just get the blinking red light or a flashing gray screen or red screen. Some of the ROMs on this will flash as if the cartridge is dirty. They went they went as authentic as possible with this thing. And uh, <laughs> pixelated glitches in the graphics. Um, Did any of them like freeze mid game? Like you're playing all the time, you'd be like do 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 do, and then it'd oh, like, stop. I had one that came up as a blank screen. But it had this sound like it was a dying pixel. It was just like, oh, I, I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the of course it came from China, so they probably didn't put too much work into making sure the names translated well. Uh, there's some games here, Fruit Pig. Fruit Pig. Um, yeah, they got some misspellings. Ninja Gatum. Ninja. <laughs> uh, Ninja got him. Three Eye Boy. Three Eyes Boy. Yeah. Give that one a try. Which one? The one with the tiger in it. Above my thumb. Q Kyoku Tiger. Valiant effort. I, I try. I try. Banana Prince is on here. Okay. Oh, yeah. You right next that. to Rocking Cats. Yeah. Atlas title. Did Rocking Cats work? No, it did not. I think that was the Dying Pixel game. Chinese chess? I think they mean oh, yeah. checkers. Chinese chess. I say that in Chinese chess. Well, they play chess in China, too. Yeah, but it's no different than the other chess. I don't have a comment for that. What, did Banana Prince work? No, sadly. Mm. That is a shame. Danky Kang. Danky Kang. <laughs> Sanic. <laughs> um, guys, we're going to take a short break. Todd has to use the restroom. Um, because he's a child. And he drank an entire iced coffee and ate some donuts and his blood sugar's through the roof. 
Uh, give us about five to eight minutes, and we will be back to play some Android Assault.